the world had succumbed to the fury of catastrophes. Cities once teeming with life now lay in ruins, swallowed by nature or consumed by human chaos. The sky, once a vast and brilliant blue blanket, had transformed into a grey and dark scar. Survivors were rare, and among them, a man fought to survive. His name had been lost in the depths of time, and now he was known only as the Wanderer. His dwelling was a cave, a crevice in the earth that had become his last refuge. Every day, he spent his waking hours fortifying the cave entrance, stacking rocks and logs into an improvised barrier to prevent the beasts that roamed the night from invading. As the sunlight faded beyond the horizon, the wanderer lit a fire inside the cave. He set up his traps and makeshift weapons, sharpening broken pieces of metal to create spears and arrowheads. Every night was a challenge, a deadly game with the creatures that howled and growled beyond the darkness. However, something else occupied the wanderer's concerns. In the darkest corner of the cave, lying on an improvised bed of leaves and furs, lay his only friend, a man whose name was now a faint echo in his mind. His friend was sick, an uncontrollable fever that kept him on the brink of consciousness, lost in delirium. The wanderer dedicated himself to caring for him, wiping his sweaty brow, giving him small sips of water they had collected in rusted cans. The weak voice of the friend would occasionally rise, murmuring unintelligible words. The wanderer listened attentively, trying to understand the words that escaped the man. Meaningless words, delusions of a mind affected by illness. The nights were the toughest. While the beasts prowled outside, the wanderer remained vigilant by his friend's side. He held one of the improvised spears, listening to the distant sounds of the darkness. Each sound heightened his senses out of the necessity to protect the only remaining link to the past. Time passed strangely in the cave. Days and nights blended in a constant struggle for survival. The wanderer found himself losing track of time, his mind absorbed by the demands of the present. With each dawn, as the first rays of sunlight broke the darkness, the wanderer emerged from the cave. His friend was still bedridden, the fever and delirium persisting. Before leaving, he checked the defenses he had built, ensuring they were intact, and cast a worried look in his friend's direction, promising to return soon. The forest beyond the cave was a world of shadows and whispers. Tall trees filtered the sunlight, creating a mosaic of light and shadow on the leaf-covered ground. Each step of the wanderer was calculated, his ear attuned to the sounds mingling with the gentle breeze. He had an improvised backpack on his shoulders, currently empty but ready to be filled with essential supplies. He searched for edible fruits and vegetables, hunted small animals that ventured near the forest's edge, and collected water from streams and springs. Every movement was careful, every choice a decision that could mean the difference between survival and failure. On one of these expeditions, the wanderer nearly met his demise. He was crouched near a bush, examining a cluster of fruits hanging from a branch. His fingers were inches away from the fruits when a subtle rustle in the leaves alerted him. He turned quickly, his eyes adjusting to the shadows. And then he saw it, a creature half-concealed among the foliage, its bright yellow eyes fixed on him. It was a beast, one of the same creatures he fought every night to keep away from the cave. Its skin allowed it to blend into the shadows, and its sharp claws glinted dangerously in the dim light. The wanderer's heart raced, his mind switching into survival mode. He slowly straightened up, and sliding to the improvised spear hanging on his shoulder. His eyes never left the beast's, every muscle tensed, ready for the imminent confrontation. The beast moved, a slow and sinuous glide among the trees. It was as if it was playing with him, testing his determination. The wanderer retreated slowly, maintaining a vigilant distance. He knew he couldn't beat it in a direct fight, not there and not alone. His only hope was to drive it away, make it give up the attack. With deliberate movements, the wanderer raised the spear, pointing it in the beast's direction. He emitted a low, guttural sound, an attempt to show dominance over the territory. The beast growled in response, sharp teeth exposed, but paused for a moment, as if considering its options. Then, a distant noise echoed through the forest, a low howl that seemed to capture the beast's attention. 
Its yellow eyes turned momentarily in the direction of the sound, and the wanderer seized the opportunity. With a swift and precise motion, he hurled the spear in the opposite direction of the beast, creating a loud noise in the trees. The beast hesitated for a moment, looking at where the spear had landed. And then, with one last look at the wanderer, it retreated, disappearing into the shadows of the forest. The wanderer remained motionless for a few moments, the tension in his shoulders finally easing. He retrieved his spear and took a deep breath, aware that he had narrowly escaped. He realized that, despite his defenses at night, the beasts weren't harmless during the day, they just hid in the shadows, waiting for the right moment to strike. With adrenaline still coursing through his veins, the wanderer resumed his search for supplies. He continued to gather fruits and vegetables, watching every movement in the forest with caution. The lesson had been clear, he wasn't alone there, and the forest was filled with dangers he had yet to learn to face. As the sun slowly moved across the sky, the wanderer filled his backpack with the resources he had collected. The fever of the wanderer's friend persisted. Each day seemed a greater challenge, each night a battle against uncertainty. The wanderer cared for him with devotion, wiping the sweaty brow and offering water and food. However, as his friend's condition worsened, the wanderer began to feel the first signs of despair. He wondered if his actions had any purpose. One afternoon, while wandering the forest in search of resources, the wanderer found something strange. Amidst the dense foliage, he spotted a wooden table, with something on it that seemed to defy the logic of that devastated world. He approached cautiously, examining the object with a mixture of confusion and curiosity. The table was an old craps table, with two dice on the felt. The wanderer stared at them, not understanding what they meant or how they had gotten there. He couldn't help but feel that it was something out of place, something that didn't fit in the distorted reality he knew. A strange and unsettling feeling overcame him. He felt as if the dice were an enigma, a message he couldn't decipher. Why were they there? What did they mean? He couldn't shake the sensation that something bigger was at play, something he was missing, something that extended beyond the shadows of the forest and the beasts that haunted his nights. That night, when he returned to the cave, the wanderer's friend was worse. The fever had stolen the man's last strength, leaving him pale and frail. The wanderer knelt by his side, holding his hand, feeling a mixture of sadness and anger. He looked at his friend and felt the pain of the impending loss. The growing sense of despair within the wanderer finally solidified. He looked at the darkness that stretched beyond the cave entrance, at the world that had turned into a place of shadows and chaos. He felt as if he was alone. The fever of the wanderer's friend had turned into a fire that consumed his life slowly. With each labored breath, each weak sigh, the man's presence was fading like a candle slowly extinguishing. Then, the friend spoke, my dream. The eyes, through the foliage, through the sky and dust. The friend's words were a faint murmur, a final effort to connect with the world before departing. And then, the wanderer's friend was gone. His eyes lost their shine, his breathing ceased. The wanderer remained motionless, feeling the emptiness that had settled in his heart. The night fell, bringing with it an even deeper darkness than before. The wanderer stayed in the cave for a while, unable to move away from the friend he had lost. But then, a tremor shook the earth, a tremor that seemed to tear at the foundations of the cave. Rocks creaked and cracked, and the world seemed to be crumbling around him. The wanderer got up hastily, realizing that there was no time to lose. He looked at his friend one last time, his sadness and grief deep, but the urgency of the situation pushed him into action. He grabbed his makeshift weapons and ran out of the cave. The landscape was transformed. The ground trembled beneath his feet, rocks shifted and fell from the surrounding cliffs. The night was filled with chaos and turmoil. The wanderer found himself forced to move away from the cave, to distance himself from the place that had been his sanctuary for so long. As he ran, the tremors continued, shaking him violently. He stumbled and fell, feeling the impact of the rocks falling near him. The darkness was relentless, the stars obscured by the chaos unfolding on the land. Finally, when the tremors subsided and the wanderer managed to stand up, he looked back. 
the entrance of the cave was in ruins, rocks and debris obstructing the path. What had been his refuge, his last sanctuary, was now just a heap of rubble. The cave had become a tomb. And so, with one last look at the cave's ruins, the wanderer walked away. He walked into the darkness of the night, each step a silent testimony of his solitary journey. The beasts that had retreated at the onset of the earthquake were now running towards him to tear him apart. At this moment, the wanderer finds himself facing the crap's table again. He puts his backpack on the ground, and just before the final attack of the beasts, he takes the two dice in his hand, shakes them for a few seconds, takes a deep breath, and rolls the dice. Snake eyes.